What's up guys, Sarah Winstead here, bikini athlete and coach for Pro Physique, and I'm back at you today on my channel with answering a common question that I've gotten from new clients, current clients, those of you that have messaged me on Instagram, all asking me, hey, Sarah, how can I build muscle and lose body fat at the same damn time? I talk to a ton of women, especially even men too, um, that ask me this question a lot on console calls about how exactly they can do that. And now, my answer to you, as with a lot of things in bodybuilding, is that it does depend, but what I've seen, and I'm gonna share a couple of stories with you today um, from my clients in the research and things like that, is that body recomposition is possible, okay? Trading out body fat for muscle mass, but we may not be seeing the scale go down. Body recomposition and building muscle, losing body fat simultaneously, tends to happen when we're not dieting, okay? Newbie gains can happen. That typically sometimes happens in clients that work with me for a transformation challenge that may be newer to lifting, be we're going back to the gym after a longer time away. They might be in a dieting phase, but they might be building muscle mass as well because the newbie gains are a real thing. Like we build muscle mass quicker the younger our training age is, or like I mentioned before, may have taken a break for a few years, started a family, things like that, and are just now coming back, the muscle memory and the muscle gains can be quite apparent and quite a lot in those opening few months, but they do slow down and it does get harder to build muscle the longer that we train. The higher your training age is, and I'm not talking about, oh, I, I've been going to you know um, these, these you know booty classes for 15 years, and I'm just like, no. Strength-based progressive overload training. That's more what I talk about when I talk about training age. You know, I don't count. For me, I was, I've was i been lifting in the gym technically since I was 18 years old, through college and things like that. I was following a plan, but it was definitely different from what I'm following now. Structured progressive overload, challenging myself in the gym, and my intensity is very close to failure on every single set. I'm focused on single set training rather than supersetting and keeping my heart rate up. And so... That all goes to say the biggest variable that I see when it comes to body recomposition is training, is those elements that I just mentioned. Maybe we are changing up our training and changing our training style from those supersetting, you know, 15 different exercises in one workout, doing, you know, burpees and things like that in between to a strength focused, not being afraid to lift heavy for who we are, you know, because heavy for me could be super heavy for you or not heavy enough for you depending upon who you are but that intensity factor in training is the biggest the biggest driver of progress when i say you know trading out body fat for muscle mass now what does that actually look like okay pound for pound i still hear this still hear this many many years into coaching um does muscle weigh more than fat no Pound for pound, they look the same. I'm going to put a picture up. Um, you Google this, muscle mass and body fat. They weigh the same. However, you can notice in the picture, they look extremely different when we talk about how they look on the body. Muscle mass, very dense, very small. Body fat, pound for pound, a little bit bigger. because of a little more space on the body as well. Very calorie dense. Body fat contains a lot of calories. That's why when we break it down, you know, it, it expels a lot of calories as well. So... That is why in a body recomposition, truly trading out body fat for muscle mass simultaneously, the scale may not change. What does change? Our waistline may get smaller. Our clothes may start to fit differently. And when I say differently, I mean, you know, the shirts may feel a little bit tighter up here in the shoulders for the dudes of being like, oh, wow, they're actually getting better. And they may feel a little bit differently around the waistline. That belt may feel a little bit different. But again, the scale isn't changing all that much. And so it's not these drastic transformations that you might be seeing um, that, you know, lose this in this amount of time or, or diet down to this shredded, you know, contest prep scenario and things like that. And so um, another big component of body recomposition is consistency. Okay. Like I said, not trying to diet sitting around maintenance, sitting around a slight surplus, sitting right around that range because our body burns, we have a range of calories that our body burns through um, our total daily energy expenditure, TDEE per day. That differs day to day. Now our basal metabolic rate, our base 
you know, metabolic rate doesn't really change day to day, but the everything else, like our meat, our non-exercise activity thermogenesis, our exercise activity thermogenesis, the thermic effect of food, all those things do vary. That's why I say it is a range of calories with maybe 100 or 200 calories worth. And so, you know, I, I like calculators, but to determine those kinds of things, I more so ask my client to track for a week, do what you've been doing for the past six, eight, 12 months, and that's what your maintenance calorie range normally is. And so, but consistency at the end of the day is the one of the biggest factors, like 1A and 1B, training and consistency, as far as noticing and forcing the body to grow and change and trade out that body fat for muscle mass. Now, another big one that you guys have heard me talk about before, my other two pillars, sleep and stress management. We have to have that. If you're in a fat loss phase, if you're building muscle mass, I don't care who you are, we need sleep. We have to recover. Our, you know, we, our digestive system has to have time to push the food through our system. The inflammation has to have time to come down again. And we cannot do that if we are constantly stressed or not sleeping, you know, I would say bare minimum seven hours. Bare minimum seven hours. That is a functional adult. That is not a optimal adult. If we can get a little bit more than that, I would love it. Stress management as well, you know, using, making sure we have our stress snacks as a coping mechanism, be it going for a, a quick little lap around your neighborhood or, you know, putting on some calming music, doing some mindful breathing techniques, coloring, reading a book, you know, having a good wind down routine at night. All these kinds of things can be helpful, not only in the fat loss phase, but in a muscle building phase and a body recomposition if that's your goal is to look and feel better in your clothes and things like that. Stress and sleep matters. And stress and sleep go hand in hand with recovery as well. If we're constantly hacking and hacking and hacking and hacking away, you know, I used to be team no rest day. I've said it before and I'll say it again. More is not always better. Better is better. That goes back to training. If we're giving our best effort every single set, every single week, then we're gonna see the muscles grow and change. And so I think it's time to put up some pictures. <laughs> So um, I'm going to use myself as an example. Then I'm going to go into one of my clients about this. So I'm going to put up a couple of pictures here of a contest prep scenario comparison of me within a pound on the scale from one time to another time. Okay, this is not, you know, again, this is not a maintenance phase, but this is a result of having a better body composition at a similar scale weight. That's more so what I was getting at here as far as like, I've built muscle mass and I am a little bit leaner as far as the body fat is concerned, one photo to the next, okay? And I'm gonna see if I can find my Junior USA photo from 2020 where I was last call outs. Junior USA is from 2023 where I won my class, was a national champion. And so there's a big difference. I'm within a pound. I'm 105 pounds on stage in 2020. I'm 104 pounds on stage in 2023. Okay, so, but I'm significantly more muscular all over my body. That was my feedback. And I'm definitely leaner at the 104 pounds, but not to the point where you're just like, that's a huge level of leanness different. It's not that much different, but you can definitely see that my body composition is different. This is why I don't place a ton of a ton of literal weight on the scale because it's not the best measure of progress. This is why I love progress photos for all of my clients because we may not see the differences week over week, but you are sure as shit gonna see them over a period of months, which leads me to my next client, Elise. She actually asked me a couple weeks ago, hey, Sarah, it's been, I think we've been four months working together. Not real, my glute measurement really isn't changing. Am I building some muscle mass in my glutes? Do they look different? Do they, you know, it, are they different? You know, I can't really tell. And so what did I do? I sent her back a screen share video of these two photos of being like, here's where we started. Here's where we are now. Boom, look at the difference. You can see it. You can literally see a whole lot more glute density and glute shape. And you can clearly tell that she has done a recomp in her glutes specifically to trade out the body fat for muscle mass. It looks different on the body. So, and she's within 1.5 pounds of these two photos, okay? And so it is possible, but what is she doing? She's eating food. She's fueling her body with nutrient dense food. She's having, a, I've worked in, you know, one untracked meal a week into her so she can have date night with her husband. Um, you know, we are eating around maintenance calories. We've actually increased her calories a little bit. She started with me, working with me because we shifted her training plan away from what I had described before as far as like smashing herself in the ground with too much volume and too much of this and too much of that of just being more focused on what her actual goal was. And maybe that'd be helpful for some of you guys for your training as far as 
is like, what is your actual goal? And do go do that. Is it to build more glutes, build more shoulders, you know, PR and a pull up or, you know, go lights out with some push ups in a push up contest or, you know, train your core to alleviate your low back pain and things like that too. Don't forget your glutes as well. But Structuring that and having a plan in place is very, very important. And that's what Elise did. I set up her plan. We ate a lot a lot of food. We trained hard and trained heavy. And she can actually, actually feel some more mind-muscle connection, which is a great indicator of building muscle mass as well. But she was having struggling, having trouble because you're like, I'm not seeing it. Well, we see ourselves in the mirror every single day. And so we may not notice the changes, like I mentioned before, day to day, week over week, and even month to month, we may not notice a lot, especially when we're in maintenance and especially when our goal is body recomposition. Because again, muscle mass, very dense, very small. We may not see the definition on the body as much in a maintenance phase. She, you could see it because she's decently lean as well as an individual. That's how she carries herself. She's a very active service member. And so, but you can see it. You can definitely see it in these two photos as far as like, it is achievable, but what did I say before? It's been four months, okay? We're still doing this. I highly recommend my clients spend the vast majority of, my, of their time not dieting not dieting it's where muscle mass comes into play it's where you can do these kinds of things like trading out in body recomposition it is possible for you but a lot of us myself included are very impatient we do not have the patience to sit in this discomfort to sit in the maintenance phase but we're not just sitting here maintenance is where the magic happens maintenance is is like where we literally challenge ourselves every single day in a different way from contest prep in a different way from dieting down. Maintenance is a challenge in and of itself, but it's a beautiful challenge. And one that I've loved over the last year and a half because that's what I've been doing. It's well, it's gonna be a year and a half in December. It's almost been a year. So but it's beautiful because that's where we build muscle mass. That's where we make the changes. That's where we also challenge ourselves mentally too to be okay with changes in the scale or, you know, being more flexible with ourselves with food and having that, you know, structured flexibility when it comes to things like being social and travel and holidays. You guys have seen my travel videos. You guys have seen how I've navigated holidays in and out of contest prep. It can be done. It requires work. Of course, everything worth having in this world requires work. Why would achieving something like body recomposition be any different? And so, um, looking at my notes, <laughs> Patience is key. I said that. So, um, and you know, you may also notice sometimes too, not just like the scales not changing your photos, but also your clothes might be fitting differently. That's what I mentioned before about the guys with the shoulders too. And because it happens very, very slowly, we may not see the changes every single week. And again, you know, I'm in maintenance and it's covered up by a layer of body fat as well. And so, but hey, are we PRing? Or are we, you know, getting one more rep every few weeks in this compound lift we're really trying to focus on? Are we occasionally going through maybe even a three rep, three rep max testing, which I'm taking one of my male clients through this week? You know, are we seeing those training improvements in the gym that we know in the long term with the consistency and the recovery management and the, all those wonderful things and the fuel that we need to? All of that is going to lead to building muscle. And then if we stick with it just that long enough mount it could also lead to some body recomposition as well and that's the cool thing because again i think we do get a lot more focused on that scale going down trust me i get caught up in it as well especially in a contest prep scenario too but we don't often realize how much work we can do in maintenance when we're not dieting and when we're just you know, checking these boxes, like I mentioned, consistency, sleep, stress management, recovery, fuel, huge part of it. We can't be in a deficit. We can't be even eating, you know, sad calories and poverty macros and expecting to do this either. We have to be in a spot where our body is happy, okay? Where our body is, we're giving it a reason to build this kind of muscle mass too. So, do, 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 do. I think that takes care of everything. Honestly, I had a list over here, had some notes per use, because even in a, in a maintenance phase, I still have moments where I'm just like, hey, we need some coffee because we're going to go film some YouTube videos and I didn't want to forget anything. So if you guys have questions about this, if you guys have other, you know, um, topics you want me to cover, especially as it relates to things like body recomposition, trading out body fat for muscle mass, you know, what about this? What about that? How do I do this? How do I do that? Comment below. 
what I'm here for. It's what I do all day as a coach is answer questions. My clients are like, ooh, I don't want to bother you. And I'm like, bother me, damn it. <laughs> Ask me questions. It's what I'm here for. Um, so yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next video.